5280 Sports Network, your morning minute on a Tuesday. Hi, how are you? Nate Lundy and Sean Drotar with you. Broncos on the brain yesterday as a little press conference to introduce a new defensive lineman. Um, and also John Elway, Vance Joseph speaking. The uh, elephant in the room, of course, is Tony Romo. John Elway had some fun with it with reporters, but continues to point out what we know, which is he's under contract. Elway can't talk about him. Doesn't mean all of us aren't talking about him, but it means that John Elway can't talk about him. So in the midst of uh, trying to show how they are shoring up their run defense, he is still talking about the quarterback position. Sean, the truth is, until Tony Romo is either in a suit doing a broadcast booth or wearing another team's jersey, this isn't going to go away. No, it's not. And it's not going to go away because the Broncos don't really have a set position at quarterback. I, I know that they say they're happy, and they should be happy with their depth in Paxton Lynch and Trevor Simeon in whichever order you want to put them in. But I thought it was telling that Vance Joseph made a mention uh, yesterday about uh, Paxton Lynch and said that basically to the extent, and I'm paraphrasing a little, that leadership is required whether you like it or not. And that includes learning the playbook and making sure you're ready to go. That is one of those that reading between the lines does not take an awful lot of effort. No, I think there's a lot of reading between the lines you can do with the various comments that were made. But as I said, the Tony Romo piece is not going to go away. Neither are people who like to ask whether Jay Cutler should come back to Denver or not, or, as Mike Florio pointed out this morning, whether or not they should bring Brock Osweiler back, considering how much money they were willing to give him just 12 months ago, and if Cleveland and Florio believes when Cleveland releases him, you could sign him for next to nothing. So the quarterback excitement around Denver is not going to go away anytime soon folks brace yourselves and then once we finally get it all settled then we can start to look at this roster and talk about what we think they're capable of accomplishing in 2017 but until we get all those pieces we aren't going to have it last night i gotta be honest with you i had so much fun i had a ton of fun last night here's why uh went to the pepsi center last night to catch the nuggets and the lakers and any of you that have ever attended a game at the pepsi center that involves uh a, a team from say pittsburgh or chicago or boston when it comes to hockey or any of those cities plus the lakers or etc when it comes to uh, basketball know the incredible influx of fans that show up at the pepsi center for the opposing team so last night all of the Lakers fans in the Pepsi Center watching them see their team get kicked in the nuts was fantastic. Man, I've been looking forward to that because it hasn't happened in a really long time for the Avalanche. So at least I was able to enjoy that last night. The uh, Nuggets get a big win. They continue to play well. Uh, they are on a bit of a win streak in terms of looking over the course of the last couple of weeks, which they need to do, Sean, because their end-of-season schedule is tough. It is, but now we've talked about them trying to get to 500. They're only three games short of 500 now. While the schedule closing is very hard for them to get there, at least they are continuing to trend in the right direction. They're more or less healthy. Only Kenneth Fareed out. And since May Mason Plumley has come to town. Now, people look at Yusuf Nurkic and say, wow, what a, what a terrific trade for Portland. They took the extra pick. Oh my goodness. Since Mason Plumley has come to town in the last four, or pardon me, last seven Nuggets wins, they have only surrendered 113 or more points once. That, in the, uh, since Plumley came to town, has made a big difference because the Nuggets were surrendering 113 on average. That's where they're going to grow. Not by scoring more, but by making sure they can stop the other team. And that's getting better. You can also see where this team is at in terms of its growth, because last night the uh, Nuggets, who were winning by 25-plus, still had the stars in there, still getting those minutes, still getting those reps. So you can see what Michael Malone's trying to do with this team in continuing to push them out there on the court, even when they had a substantial lead. Um, but yes, it was fun to watch Lakers fans have to leave the Pepsi Center sulking. Although Delicious. I don't, don't really know what they Salty were expecting, tears. but... I was really so happy good. to be able to see it. Uh, reminder, get online, 5280sportsnetwork.com. Make sure you sign up for the Bracket Challenge presented by InsureU Colorado, as well as our friends at Southbridge Dentistry. Some great prizes from TAP14 and others. So get in there, get your bracket. you got a couple days left to be able to do it. It is completely free. So even if you've got an office pool, sign up with ours. Get yourself uh, a chance to win some great prizes. But for now, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., Mile High Sports Radio. For Sean, I'm Nate. See ya.